What's going on guys, Pat here, and in this episode of the build series, now that the car is finally rewired and running, it's time to begin final reassembly so we can get this thing back on the road. Alright, so as you guys saw in the last episode of the build series, made a lot of good progress on the car and with the big milestone of it finally running again, which is good and it's a big morale booster, but there is still a lot of work to do. Uh, before we get this thing uh, back on the road, shaking it down and autocrossing it and getting it on track. Uh, so really lots of this is just going to be little odds and ends, nothing too crazy here. I'll kind of just go over a quick list of things I know off the top of my head still have to be done. Um, in the front here, still have to uh, connect the steering shaft, cut that to length, paint that, and then get it in. Uh, that should be here today, so hopefully I can uh, knock that out today and then the steering will be hooked up. Uh, some of the wiring behind the engine here needs to be cleaned up. It's a little bit of a rat's nest. So we just need to kind of organize everything. It's just hanging in there loosely right now. Uh, really, the biggest thing in the engine bay here is we still don't have a throttle cable hooked up. So I need to find one uh, that's going to be the right length and also find one that'll mount here and secure, but also will mount on the firewall because most of the cable length is going to be running from the firewall up under the dash and around to the, the throttle pedal assembly. A lot of throttle cables that I find online are for stock applications where the actual length of the cable on the inside of the cab isn't that long, which isn't going to work for us. So I just need to find one that'll work and then I can uh, take care of that. Um, obviously, we need to get the fenders and hood back on up here. Um, uh, little stuff like I need to cut this stud down uh, to the right length so I can get the nut back on for the air cleaner. We used to run a, a spacer to get it to clear the throttle linkage back when we had a carburetor. And I just never took that off, but we don't need that anymore. So can take that out. You have to get the front bumper on, um, hook up the lights up there. In the interior, I obviously need to clean up all the tools and scraps that uh, are kind of left over from when we wired the car. Um, I need to get the digital dashes properly mounted in there. I need to hang the uh, remote brake bias adjuster. I'll hook up the turn signals. Uh, so I got to create a bracket to hold the turn signal itself and then just uh, hook up the wires to that, put the glove box back in. Um, I need to uh, do a support beam. We're actually gonna use some C-channeled steel, which I have over here on the floor, uh, to brace the brake pedals because they flex when you hit them, which we knew we we're gonna have to brace, so we just haven't bolted that in yet, uh, which is over here on the floor. So we'll cut this tongue. And then part of that will bolt to the uh, pedal assembly, and then the other part will bolt up under the dash on uh, a factory uh, structure there, like a factory bracing structure under the dash, so it's nice and rigid. Um, I think that's really it on the inside of the car. Obviously, I still have to paint the floor, which I'll do after I probably take it for its first uh, test drive. And then in the back here, uh, I just need to put the back bumper on, um, and I need to hook up the uh, fuel vent, which we're running back here. Uh, so we're going to run the rubber hose up over the tank and up there. We'd always had an issue at a full tank if you were braking hard or turning that gas would splash out of the vent. So we figured moving it back there and above the tank should give us uh, enough room in the routing that the gas isn't going to work its way up and out. Um, oh yes, and I have to set the uh, clutch pedal stop so I can actually use the transmission. Uh, so that's, uh, that's really it. Probably going to get started on just some little stuff like cleaning up. Um, so I'm going to get going on that and then I'll check with you guys once I've made some progress. Alright, so I just want to check in. I've been uh, working on making a uh, clutch pedal stop for the last uh, little bit here. Um, long term, I'm going to go to a build aluminum piece, um, but just for getting the car up and running, uh, the piece I've made will be more than enough. I mean, I could run it, run it long term. I just think a billet piece would look a little better. Uh, so this is a piece I made out of half inch, or I think it's actually a quarter inch steel that we had laying around uh, right here which is basically a piece that I uh, bent into an L shape. So I have two holes drilled here, uh, which grab the two bolts that come through the pedal body that hold the face of the pedal on. And then there's a hole in the back side there, which you'll see here, uh, for the 3 8 bolt to go through and then hit a jam nut, and then that'll go up against the floor to stop. Um, which is how most people set the tilt and pedals up. I mean, it's not ideal to have metal banging on metal, so I might put a thin piece of foam or something there just to isolate it so you're not just running a bolt straight into the floor, just if anything, it'll sound annoying, uh, the clanging noise it'll make when you're just hitting it repeatedly, uh, especially when you're using a lot of pedal force. Um, this is necessary, we have to put this in before we can actually use the trans, uh, just because if you don't put this in and set it properly, um, you run the risk of uh, pushing your throw out bearing uh, too far, and then you'll bend the uh, spring fingers on the clutch or the diaphragm fingers, whatever they are. Um, so you need to put this in. The procedure for setting this uh, isn't too bad. I have to wait till my dad gets home or I get a second set of hands because you have to jack the back of the car up. Um, someone has to depress the clutch pedal uh, with it in gear and the second the person can rotate the tires on the back, you stop, uh, take a measurement at the bottom of the pedal and then you push the uh, pedal um, 
a quarter inch further, a quarter inch uh, measured at the bottom of the pedal, and that's what you set your stop to, um, as per what Tilton says. Uh, but that's really the last thing to do on the pedals, aside from adding the brace in, uh, which I'll, I don't know how well this is filming under here. Um, there's a few holes here that we're going to be uh, grabbing for the brace up here. Uh, grab here, and then we'll probably grab somewhere on the dash and do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to finish installing this, and then I'll uh, catch up with you guys once I'm making progress on something else. All right, so the car is probably looking a little different uh, than the last time you saw it. Finally gave it a bath. That's the first time I've washed it in like eight months now. It uh, looks like a whole new car. It's so weird seeing it without a, uh, a layer of dust on it. I almost forgot what the color looked like. Um, also started putting the front clip back on, uh, which is cool. A little nerve wracking to do by myself, but uh, I want to keep making progress. I didn't just want to wait um, you know, several days until I could get another set of hands on this. Um, so I got the passenger side uh, fender on and the wheel well. Um, we're gonna have to reset all the alignments to the body just because it changed with the new body bushings and stuff. Um, so they're just kind of bolted on loosely right now. You can see the gap's atrocious on everything right now. Nothing's set. They're just bolted on so they're up off the floor and on the car. Um, but obviously we're gonna have to go through and uh, actually set everything. Uh, over here on the driver's side, um, I have this one bolted on. Uh, same thing, just loosely. Uh, they're both adjusted uh, up and out of the way so I can open the doors without worrying about uh, hitting the end of the door or anything. Um, I still have to put the wheel well on, so I'm going to have to uh, jack this side of the car up and take this wheel off to get the wheel well up and in, uh, which is probably what I'm going to start doing next. Um, also, finally got the throttle cable all squared away. Um, didn't really film anything with doing that. It's not really anything too exciting. Uh, you can see right there, I have the hole in there. It's a uh, 3 8 hole I had to drill in the firewall, and that's a quarter inch uh, grommet to uh, fit the throttle cable through. So that rubbed straight through, which is nice because it had like a weird bend in it before, so it wasn't a super smooth throttle feel. Um, so if you look up in here, I don't know how well to show it, I made a little L bracket that bolts up on this uh, steering column stud here, and then comes down, and the throttle cable uh, gets held there on the end, and then it comes through and then hooks up to the pedal. You can see it. Uh, pull there and move so it's good end up being nice and linear there's no weird kinks or anything in it so it's a smooth throttle actuation um when i turn on the sniper the throttle position maxed out at like 97 percent um and i had the butterflies or the throttle blades all the way open um which is good at first i was worried that it wasn't reaching 100 percent, but apparently that's pretty common on the snipers you just want to make sure that the uh, the blades are all the way open so uh yeah that's uh that's really what i've been working on I uh, just so wanted to check in now that the, uh, the front nose is uh, going back on, uh, which is uh, good. You know, it's fun to see. Uh, I would uh, show some wheel fitment pictures, but the camera's all messed up from having the car up and down. We're going to have to drive the car a couple miles up the suspension saw before you can actually see what the uh, 315 looks like in the front with the fenders on. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to keep uh, keep working on this, uh, finish putting the wheel well in, and then uh, start taking care of some miscellaneous odds and ends. All right, so we're picking up this part of the video a few days after the last part. Uh, we had a lot going on, so I didn't really get a chance to film too much, but a lot has happened, so I'm going to try and fill you guys in. Uh, you'll notice the cart is pretty much all back together. Um, hood's back on. Um, fender gaps are set, at least as best they can be with these crappy aftermarket fenders. Um, front bumpers hung and on. Um, pretty much everything's set. We spent the weekend taking care of a lot of little odds and ends. Um, rear bumper, uh, I think... Uh, this wasn't on in the last part of the video. It's on now. Um, tailpipes are in and adjusted. Uh, they were just kind of hanging loosely there before. Um, there's some seats back in this. Uh, I bolted in the lap belts just for now. I'll put the full harnesses on once I fully reassemble the car. Uh, you know, it's digital dashes up, kind of hanging out. Uh, turn signal switches in there. I had to uh, change um, my uh, path I was going to go with the turn signal switch. Uh, to this is an American auto wire universal turn signal switch that I had to drill the dash to mount um, So sadly not gonna be able to use the uh, motion race works bill of peace that I had and uh, It's really my own fault for not having a great understanding of the turn signal system in this car um, really my issue stemmed with this is that it's a three post uh, Turn signal switch. So this is for cars that pretty much have entirely separate uh, turn signal circuits from their brake lights. So this has the power in from the flasher and then your outputs left and right to the uh, front and rear lights. Uh, so I ran into an issue with this uh, since this car has uh, turn signals and brake lights that are pretty much integrated uh, with each other uh, that that wasn't going to work. Uh, I was just having uh, some weird behaviors. Uh, you know, you'd hit the brakes and it would back feed power into the flashes so lights wouldn't flash. Little things like that. So it's just easier to go to this switch, which has uh, separate power inputs for the 
uh, brake light power off the brake light switch and then also off the flasher so they're separate circuits and everything functions as it should uh, so that's that I'm um, really wrapping up uh, just a few things here so we can get it uh, taking first first uh, proper test drive I took it for a couple laps around the neighborhood which I didn't really film um, really the only things I had to adjust uh, was the uh, Clutch pedal needed to be adjusted to have a little more throw to disengage clutch a little more and then I had to take a little bit of slack out of the throttle cable, but that was just around the block. I'm going to film when it goes for its first proper cruise, which will probably be the next part of this video. Um, but right now I'm just trying to take care of a bunch of little things to get it to that point where I can you know, take on its maiden voyage. Uh, so I'm going to throw uh, this into the dash where it's going to go next to the ignition switch. I'm going to bolt in the main digital dash. I'm not going to put any of the trim and stuff in yet. I'm going to probably wait to fully assemble the interior until I have all the 500 uh, braking miles in. But I'm going to have all my displays and gauges hooked up. Um, and really the last thing that has to happen after that is probably just noticed the uh, old wheel and tire uh, on the front. I'm just going to swap back to the old uh, wheel and tire setup for the 500 braking miles for the trans uh, just because these are brand new tires. So I don't want to chew those up with 500 miles uh, when I'm less than two weeks away from the first event that uh, I've signed up to do with the car. Uh, there's an event at Lime Rock happening on June 26th. Um, which is a car show, but also they're doing an autocross event there. It's kind of laid back. It's not really super competitive. It's not, you know, something I'm looking to go and win by any means. It's just going to go and shake the car down. Uh, it'll be fun because I'm driving the car to and from Lime Rock. So not only is that the uh, furthest drive I've ever made in this car, but uh, we're going to see if I can drive it there, uh, you know, beat on it on the track all day and drive it home, which is, the, you know, the true test of a pro touring car. So I'm going to uh, swap back uh, to these once... Uh, you know, we're a little closer to the event probably later next week um but yeah so i'm gonna wrap up these last few details and then hopefully the next video clip is uh the one that i've been waiting for for a long time i'm sure a lot of you guys have been and that's going to be uh the first drive with the six speed and the new setup in the car so the car is basically warmed up everything looks good i uh, just wanted to fire it up let it sit for a little bit come up to near operating temperature it's almost there uh, just look over everything, uh, make sure there's no big leaks, check fluid levels before I started it, everything looked good. Um, checked out the turn signals, brake lights, everything works as it should. So the uh, new switch, which is uh, down here for the turn signals, uh, fixed everything. Obviously it's not as convenient as having a turn signal up on the column, but uh, you know maybe that'll be a winter project of making our own billet turn signal. So I'm going to throw the camera up on the windshield and I uh, hope you guys enjoy this ride along.
made it back. Uh, car survived and so did I. Uh, you'll probably notice there wasn't too much uh, footage just because my uh, windshield mount snapped in half at one of the hinges uh, while I was driving. I'm actually holding the uh, broken half of the mount in my hand right now. Um, kind of unfortunate, but it was also just nice to, uh, you know, not worry about, you know, filming and getting any good shots, just kind of driving the car. Uh, car did great, no major issues, no leaks, no, you know, weird behaviors or anything. Granted, this is just super mild street driving to, uh, breaking the clutch and the transmission while I get used to it. But, uh, you know, car feels really good. It's, uh, it feels like a whole new experience, uh, for sure. Um, you know, with the, the manual now, obviously, and, you know, all the, uh, and change that we made to the setup but uh yeah i'm excited to uh, keep driving it and keep logging miles i mean uh to see how far this car is coming you know the six months that i've been uh uploading to this channel it's uh it's been really cool and i'm excited to you know keep it going you know we're so close to having it all set for its first event but you know obviously there is still a lot to do the uh break-in period still has to you know be taken care of i have to put the full interior back in once that's done but uh you know little by little we're kind of chipping away at it so yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the first little, you know, glimpse of this thing. Um, I'll probably put a lot more driving footage in the next episode, which is just going to kind of be wrapping up all the little details and uh, logging some more braking miles on this thing. But this is really the last uh, episode of the build series, at least from this winter revamp of... Uh, you know, just a lot of, you know, work going on from here on out. It's just a lot of little stuff. So hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. You know, and feel free to leave a comment if you have comments on anything. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one where there will be uh, a lot more of this and a lot less of me.